Disco DSP's OBXD, the greatest free analog synthesizer plugin of all time, has just been updated with tons of new features. Here's what's new in version 3.0. Just a reminder that OBXD is completely free, courtesy of Disco DSP. If you appreciate their hard work in recreating the iconic Oberheim OBX synthesizer from 1979 in software form, there is an optional donation button. So consider throwing some dollar dollar bills their way, y'all. Starting with the default patch, you'll notice immediately that the user interface is different. And good news, the 2.0 and up versions of OBXD are actually a separate plugin. So it's not going to cause any problems if you load up an old project in your DAW. That will load the older version of OBXD. This is a new plugin. One of the first things you might notice is this push button in the filter section. So none of the original Oberheims or the OBs anyways had fully resonant filters. What the push button allows you to do is when the filter is in the 12 decibel or two pole mode, it can now fully self resonate. Let's add a little bit of decay envelope amount and bring the cutoff down. And increase the resonance. You can hear it's very powerful, but it's not fully self-resonant. Pretty close. Using push, we can take it that last little bit of the way. And this is useful for creating wonderful play the filter type sounds. Let's increase key tracking, bring the cutoff all the way down and actually turn the oscillators off and still play the filter or we could feed it some noise here and get these wonderful, noisy, breathy bell type tones. Just a gorgeous sound. And of course we could feed it a little bit of oscillator tone just to beef that up. Now in 24 decibel per octave mode, it doesn't do anything. You can see nothing's happening. You might notice the mix button looks different too. It's actually labeled down low pass, band reject, band pass, and high pass. I was speaking to a really big YouTuber the other day and he mentioned that he didn't realize there was a multi-mode filter built into OBXD. So of course we have the low pass filter, right? But we could also move it over to band reject or band pass by initiating this button. But if you love those famous notch Oberheim sounds, that's actually built into this plugin. We could hit band pass here, and this is a band pass instead. Or we could take it all the way over to high pass. All sounds really gorgeous. And of course, we can now push that resonance on the high pass as well. Ah, it's so glorious. One of the biggest quality of life improvements over the old OBXD and indeed even the original Oberheim hardware is the ability to invert the filter envelope. This makes certain types of sounds that were previously impossible on the synthesizer possible. And I love these sorts of inverted filter shapes because you couldn't get this type of sound any other way. <laughs> Those types of sounds where the release character of the filter actually opens up instead of closing, it's only possible with an inverted envelope. More importantly though, I think you really need an inverted envelope for something like a high pass or a band pass filter. This is about the best you can get with a regular envelope shape. Which is weird. If you invert that though, check this out. Just sounds so good. Now before in OBXD, the key tracking was just on and off. And now you can see I was already using that it's fully variable, which is great for certain types of sounds that you don't always want the key tracking to be either all the way on or all the way off. With this much resonance and key tracking off, it can get kind of an annoying type of sound. 
increasing the key tracking all the way will cause the filter to track each key perfectly if the cutoff is all the way down or almost all the way down. If you increase the resonance up, you can get these sorts of almost organ type sounds by using the filter as a third oscillator. <laughs> But sometimes you don't want that. For certain types of sounds, it can be really cool for the filter to get brighter over the keyboard, but not all the way. I like using this sort of 50% setting on something like a dark string sound, so we can get really dark cellos at the low end. But up top, we still get some nice articulation. That would be too dark if I brought this all the way down. So we can still kind of get that natural sort of sound because violins will still have some warmth shaved off, but not too much. Down low, it's nice and meaty. You might have noticed this conspicuous log to linear control that's attached to the attack of the filter and amplifier envelopes. We can control these separately in OBXD. What this does is it's affecting the shape of the attack portion of the envelope. Most analog synthesizers have a logarithmic or exponential shape to their envelopes, meaning that it's not a perfectly flat envelope. It actually has a kind of a curve to it. And we can use this control to change the attack sound of the filter. So in this case, I actually want to invert it so it will turn it into a bit of a pluck. Bring the cutoff all the way up and the envelope amount all the way up. We have a nice pluck sound here. And we can hear how that shape changes as we move from logarithmic to linear. If we increase the resonance, we can hear what's going on with the differences between logarithmic and linear. It's a very subtle thing, but you can hear the way that it swoops in. You can hear that's that perfect sort of flat shape to the attack. And this is gonna be your more analog shape. It sounds a little more classic to my ears, but if you want evolving soundscapes, sometimes you want a more flat curve to that. So it really takes its time to get there and you get all of those little harmonics. So it's a really cool feature they added. Another feature you might have noticed is the sync button in the LFO section. So before OBXD had a free running LFO, just like an Oberheim OBX, or indeed almost all vintage analog synthesizers have. Now what we can do is actually sync this to our host tempo and our DAW. So we can do those types of sounds that were not possible before and really get tight integration to a track. So whereas before we would have this LFO rate that could go from all the way up to 50 hertz into audio rate. Now, when we hit sync on, we can lock this into the tempo of a track. Super useful for those types of sounds, especially with the square wave option here. We could route this to the oscillators as well. We could create these sorts of baseline sounds. Super cool as well. So the canny eyed among you might have noticed this pulse width envelope amount knob here. So we can finally use an envelope to modulate pulse width, which is one of my favorite tricks that didn't come about in vintage Oberheims until the Matrix series, the Expander Matrix 12 and Matrix 6. You can create some amazing pluck sounds using this. First off, we'll start with just oscillator two here and with the pulse width all the way down, it's just a kind of gorgeous Game Boy sound. Really great, but not a lot going on. If we increase the pulse width envelope amount, you'll notice what this decay knob does. And then all the way. Increase the decay a bit here so we can get a little more sweep and maybe even a little bit higher of a pulse width. You can hear that we can push it all the way through zero and now it has an almost soundtrack sort of quality to it. Takes a second to get in there, but if we just add a little bit, we can get this really thin, but gorgeous sound.
really wonderful sort of character to it. Now, Oscillator 1 this whole time can still be unaffected by that. Right? So if I have this both in here, you can hear that. The difference, or we can actually use that to our advantage, the difference in the pulse width there is creating some interesting pulse width modulation-esque sound. But if we hit this one plus two button, it will affect the pulse width of both oscillators. And we can even offset oscillators to pulse width amount. So if we want to get that really thin, and that way we can get a beefier low end. We're almost getting a unique attack character there as it nudges towards zero. See how it actually takes a second to come in, that higher oscillator? Really gorgeous sounding, and we're not using any PWM with the LFO, which of course we can do, right? It's just really impressive how they were able to capture so many little details in the imperfections of analog hardware in this free software. Real quick, we have the step button here, which is a nice little UI improvement from the last version. With it off, the tuning of the oscillator is fully variable. Make it hard sometimes to nail that semitone value, right? But if I put step on, you can see it'll fix it directly to semitones so you can do fifths and all of that sort of thing. Super cool, easy little function, quality of life improvement. I just pulled up a default preset and I'd like to pull your attention over to the voice variation section. This is where you can get all sorts of interesting analog behavior. You can think of it as sort of aging your OBXD plugin and you could increase things like filter slop and envelope slop so that the envelopes and the filter cutoff aren't always in the same place, just like you would get on real vintage hardware. You could also pan the voices like you could on the original OBX so that you get a much wider stereo feeling out of the synthesizer. But for now, I'll just double click those to bring them back to center. And you can see we have this new filter comp knob and it defaults to 38. So what is filter compensation? Well, in technical terms, it's changing the resistance of the exponential converter in the filter. In practical terms, what it is, is it adds some variation into the way the key scaling works for the filter, which is a little bit more authentic. So to illustrate what's going on with filter compensation, I picked a frequency that's ringing pretty badly if you boost the resonance. But it's actually slightly sharp of where it would really leap out. So if I increase filter compensation, you can hear that that ringing gets louder. And what's actually going on is the scaling is less perfect as you go up to a higher note. And with that off, if I just lower the cutoff a bit, you can hear at 83 there that the ringing is really bad. And so what's going on is at 84 with the filter compensation all the way up, it is subtly not key tracking quite as well, just like a real analog synth. It's not perfect with the way the voltage gets converted to key tracking. And so you just get a little bit more variation, a little bit more of that analog feel. It's a subtle thing, but really when it comes to making a plug-in feel analog, it's a bunch of very subtle things stacking up that make it sound so rich and interesting. Very subtle, but you can hear the differences there as the resonance gets more intense as I crank filter compensation as the key tracking is a little bit off. Another great thing is this oversampling feature. So in the older version of OBXD, we just had a high quality button. Now we have control over no oversampling, two times oversampling, and four times oversampling. Now I've got a pretty beefy computer, but with oversampling on 2X, my CPU meter is still registering at zero, as in this plugin is not making enough of a dent on my CPU for it to even show up. And at 4X, it's doing 0.1%. So you can rest assured that even on 4X, this plugin was coded so well and is so resource efficient that it's not going to have any major impact on your CPU or your latency.
couple of things when it comes to the menu and MIDI control. One thing is we can now use MIDI CCs to change which preset bank we're in, which is super useful for like a live situation. If you want a preset from a certain bank, you can just automate that into your DAW or use some hardware to send that MIDI CC and OBXD will respond to it. As well as the menu's just been streamlined in general and we have a better view of everything that's going on with all of the amazing presets that come with this plugin. We can turn on this preset bar and voila, we have access to these features as well if we wanna change banks or we wanna change which patch we're on, as well as this really unique disc mode. And what this allows you to do is actually sort of hot swap programs by opening up your preset folder, which is in your documents folder on your computer. So now you can change things out directly browsing from there. Another feature that isn't new to OBXD version 3, but I didn't know about, is this MIDI feature where you can actually pick any one of these synthesizers and once you've selected this, if you're running MIDI out of your synth into OBXD, OBXD will respond perfectly to all of the knobs on your synthesizer. So let's say you have a Korg micro Korg, for instance. Well, if you tweak the filter cutoff knob on that synth, it'll tweak the filter cutoff in real time on the software, which is such cool hardware integration. I didn't know the software could do. And there's a lot of new and older synthesizers it's compatible with, which is super neat. Now the free version of OBXD3 mirrors the same limitations of OBXD2, which is basically there's no oversampling, there's no support for VST3 or AAX, which I understand because I'd hate to have to pay someone to provide support for a free plugin, and it's prohibited to use for commercial purposes. So if you're making money off of music with OBXD, you should buy the full license. So that's everything new in OBXD version 3. If you liked what you heard and you want to dig a little deeper, you might like this video, which is my analog synth masterclass I did using the version 2 of OBXD. It's an hour and a half of content. Continue to be excellent, guys, and I will see you in the next video.